Okay, we're in the town of Delunaga, the gold mining, or once the gold mining town in the 1800s. And we're at gold mining uh, museum. And we'll be going for an underground mining tour. And he's swing panning for gold. Hopefully he'll discover a big nugget. The bottom of that. Found any big nuggets? It's false gold, they call it. Fool's gold. Fool's gold. <laughs> yeah. I think it's getting close. Alright. Takes about 15, 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah. To complete the process in and sift the sand out. <laughs> Whoa. Close up. There's no gold there yet. It's at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I see some down. That pirate wash down there. Where you go? Oh, did you get any? Yeah, all right here. This is my pen, it's still got to go. Looks like <laughs> five pieces. Whoa! Is, uh, is all that's going to wash away, oh. and uh, you don't have to worry too much about losing anything on the top. I just got the gold settle down at the bottom. Diana's still going at it. She doesn't want to lose any of that gold, so she's taking 30 minutes instead of 10. and narrow it down to the last little bit so that you can go back through and work it with a gold pan. Yep. But in the end, it pretty much all still boils down to doing it with a gold pan. <clears throat> Any gold? We'll see in just a second. Get the rest of this sand washed out of there. Get the rest of that pyrite out of there. This is Diana's collection too. <laughs> oh, she's got heaps. Have I? It looks like four pieces. Ooh. Well, you're richer than me. <laughs> I believe that means you're buying dinner, man. <laughs> All right, okay. Cool. Four very nice pieces. Great job. Ooh. Very good. Paying for our trip. <laughs> <laughs> Sell me this gold. Here we are, walking down into the gold mine for a tour. And deeper underground here. Put our hard hats on. Wow. A bit more light up here. Folks, our first stop here is the spot where that legendary 22 foot wine band of porch used to sit. Still today, the world's largest quartz vein to be recorded ever found. Used to fill this entire crevice before the miners got down here in 1900 and blasted it all out at that time. Now, the hole was very famous even by today's standards. It got its own name about 100 years ago when a newspaper reporter came down here to do an article on the mine. And when he came down here, he stood at the very bottom of that hole. And when he looked up, he was so amazed at what he saw that the only thing he could say was this. He looked up and he said, Love! Wow. So they named it the Glory Hole. And it's been called the Glory Hole ever since. Everybody get a good look at that as we head down. Alright. Before we head down any further, if you all will take a look over here at the wall. This cluster of white rock you're looking at is that very same substance that these miners were looking for down here. This is a vein of quartz. And this is exactly what a gold miner would hope to find down in this mine whenever he was drilling down here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this vein you're looking at is a good bit larger than your average vein, of course. The majority of the veins you find down here would be something more like that thin little strip about an inch thick down at the bottom. 
But even a vein that size can contain a lot of gold in it when you take into consideration that roughly 90 to 95 percent of the world's gold is actually naturally found smaller than cooking flour. 90 to 95 percent. So those chunks and nuggets, and even the flakes in the bottom of your gold. At this point, you can now all see the video below the water table here in the long run. And this is the reason for the mine itself being so wet. It is always this wet constantly. Here what we have is a natural underground spring that has been washing down our wall for a little over 100 years now, since the room was first drilled and created. Now this red muddy little stuff you see on the wall is actually poses a common problem. Lots of water. The mine itself constantly fills up with water because of this water that's always seeping through the rocks out of the water table, the aquifers around us. Now this water, like I said, is slowly filling up, so we do have to pump it out about once every five to six months. You see, it's brewing over the bat. That's exactly right. This is one of the Currently, it's hibernating. You will notice that the cart has a gasoline motor high mud out of the tunnels, all of it had to be shoveled by hand. Yeah. Now, that process took about five years, and over the course of that five years, they cleaned out approximately 6,000 tons of mud and rock out of this mine. It was a very, very long and painstaking cleanup process, but thanks to that, we can now uh, have tours down in here today. You take a look at the wall to your right as you walk by, you can see some of the original drill holes. These cylindrical shaped grooves in the rock were once holes drilled for dynamite blasting, and you can still see remnants of those in the rock. Gives you a little bit of insight into some of the work that the miners did down here in the 